You're a director here at uh, ISAC. Yes. When did you first join uh, Israel? Exactly on October 25th, 1976. Um, can you just outline what happens here at the Israel uh, Satellite Center? Yeah. Basically, uh, this is one center that is entrusted with the sponsor, total responsibility of building satellites for India. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is the national uh, expectation mm -hmm. from everybody, in, in, anybody and everybody in India, basically, because right. this is the center from where we have to do the configuration studies, mm -hmm. the design, the development, uh, we are testing, mm -hmm. making it ready for to go to the launch, yeah. launch phase, yeah. do the inaugurate operations, and then come back to the next project. <laughs> That's what uh, <laughs> the cycle happens, is, yeah. to, uh -huh. uh, to put it in short about right. the way in which you have to work. And essentially, we have trained ourselves mm -hmm. and built about uh, 70 hour satellites still now, right from uh, 70. Uh, Aria Vita to where we are today. Right. So, so the, the uh, bare bones satellite, the, the chassis comes in from the Hindustan Aeronautical Limited here. They do everything that's necessary to get it ready to be inserted into the rocket to, to launch. So, yes. everything, the key everything aspects. Everything, uh, even the the structural part is also designed by our people. No, I see. Okay. No, no, right from day one. Right, uh, right from Aribeta days, we have a good structure, structures, uh -huh. thermal mechanism, everything under sky is available in this right. in this satellite center. Uh -huh. Structural group is there, thermal group is there, mechanism group is there, mm -hmm. then um, TTC, RF, anything you name under the sky, right. everybody, a uh, different set of people uh, is available for us, mm -hmm. and all of them work for the satellite. Um, in an integrated manner, right. and HR happens to be the production agency as far as structures is concerned. Right. But there also we have posted our people to see that uh, things are done correctly. Right. And uh, when it comes to uh, clean room, and then onwards, our people really take on. Last, your previous role was the director of ISTRA. Yes. Oh, can you tell us a little bit about what ISTRA uh, was all about? Yes, uh, um, uh, ISTRA stands for ISRO Telemetry Tracking and Command Network. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is where I started my career with. Then, of course, I got transferred from ISTRAC to ISAC in 1978 itself. I came to ISRO right. Satellite Center uh -huh. and worked here from 1978 to 1998. Mm -hmm. uh, chairman of uh, ISRO, Dr. Kekasur uh -huh. he said, uh, she was, It's good that you have been doing very well, uh -huh. but I want you to really see how we can make uh, things better at ISTRAC, basically. Uh -huh. uh, center which is uh, um, um, doing more in terms of uh, tracking and command operations of all satellites and low orbit missions is what we, start, we are doing those at that point of time. So after the launch, all the communication yes, and interactions. Exactly, exactly. If you were to think back at your time as director at ISTRA, what do you think uh, your, contr one, just one contribution if you want to tell us about that uh, you, one innovation that you brought when you were there as a director? Okay, uh, undoubtedly <laughs> making uh, the Indian Deep Space Network mission, right. 32 meter antenna, which is the first of its kind uh, we built in indigenously in India. Right. And I happen to be the project director for doing that work. Means uh, we, have, we just had to start right from scratch, I should say. Scratch is really scratch because right. <laughs> nothing was there, and uh, we started right from uh, uh, team, team form to select a site for. Uh, erecting the antenna and then only yeah. go ahead with the rest of the things. So let's just uh, talk about this. 32 meter diameter, that's pretty big, it's a 100 foot diameter yeah. and it's fully steerable. Yes, yes. And it's based, it located at uh, Bailavu. Yeah, yeah. We, tra we convinced ourselves that yes, we can do it, but we have necessarily work very, very hard is what yeah. I, I convinced everybody there and took the lead uh, from the front and I should say that uh, entire Indian industry whatever that's possible from our side, our uh, uh, communication expert from uh, ECIL Hyderabad and our uh, BRC from Baba Atomic Research Centre right. and many other industries in and around Bangalore uh -huh. and HMT, or, or whatever, whomsoever whom you want really, right. all of them really uh, pitched in and said that yes, we will do for you whatever that's required because it was certainly a very big job for uh, uh, one team to really do that yeah. but I had such a wonderful team. Uh, even today, everybody enjoys the way in which they work for. Uh, the I, I see that uh, frequently in the development of ISRO. Um, even when Professor Rao was building Aryabhata, mm. nobody built satellites in India before. And he said, Look, well, we don't have any experience, let's get some experience yes. and, by doing it. And indeed, when Vikram Sarabhai said, Oh, let's, have a, uh, let's launch a rocket, 
nobody had done it before, and they, he cobbled together all the individual support elements he needed, but it was an Indian launch in, on Indian soil, and it was a start. So the, what I think you explained to me is, is another ex example of um, the inspired let's all get together and see what we can do, even though we may not have the ideal Ex experience. Exactly, you, you, you have summarized very nicely. The 32 meter antenna was commissioned in October 2008, and it was about a week or so before the launch of yes. Chandrayaan 1. If you didn't have that 32 meter teles uh, radio telescope antenna, would it have been possible to conduct the Chandrayaan 1 mission? Uh, with some limitation, uh, it was possible because we had taken some small, uh, um, I should say, schedule backup, uh, whatever that, uh, yeah. that has been uh -huh. done with respect to a uh, bigger antenna realization and all that. Mm -hmm. So what we did was, uh, we, we, we contacted uh, specific manufacturers of antenna worldwide mm -hmm. and got one offer from our uh, friends in Germany right. and we imported an 18 meter antenna, not a 2 meter uh, thing, right. but 18 meter antenna, we just found that that is good enough to track Chandrayaan like mission. Right. Mm -hmm. and it's not meant for deep space missions and all that, but at least right. Chandrayaan is about 4 lakh kilometers away. It is possible to do it. Right. So we have put a backup uh, plan in terms of right. schedule uh, right. slippage, right. but we are very happy that both antennas were available for us. 18 meter um, antenna. Uh, it's also an 11 meter antenna yes. as well? that we have plenty of 11 meter antenna. We, we zeroed on, on some of those uh, smaller dishes, smaller mm -hmm. uh, diameter dishes, small because uh, ISTRAC has the mandate of tracking all these uh, lower orbiting satellites. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maybe any, anywhere between uh, 700 and 1,200 kilometers, some such right. altitudes that uh -huh. we can track. Right. So when I went to ISTRAC, we had about uh, a few uh, 10 meter antennas were available in East Track mm -hmm. network for at that point of time. Right. Then, um, and that was about um, uh, 14, 15 years old at that point of time, right. 85, 86, they had built the antenna. Mm -hmm. And number of no, antennas were quite limited at that point of time. So I went down with uh, fairly big, uh, another energy um, right. <laughs> capsule, I should say, uh -huh. which made me to really think of modernizing the entire East Track network. Right. That means uh, we have to really think of uh, uh, making the Stark Network as big as possible, as wide as possible in terms of uh, coverage, mm -hmm. and provide the uh, telemetry daily command and tracking support for all your missions. Just to understand the scope of the Indian Deep Space Network, you obviously have the 32 meter antenna uh, not far from here in Bangalore. Um, within India, where else do you have uh, Site, sites which are part of the Indian Deep Space Network. The Andaman Islands? Mm, no, we don't have anything. Yeah. Andaman Islands, we have one 11 meter antenna, two of them are available in Andaman. Right. Uh, go and, and where, and Port Blair is the place Port where Blair. we. Port but they are, that's, they are part of the Indian Deep Space they are Network. Part of, uh, they are not part of Indian Deep Space Network, they are part of Indian uh, East Track Network, basically. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. They are part of East Track Network. Mm -hmm. These uh, smaller dishes are required for tracking both launch vehicles and the satellites. That's, That's how we uh, come right. together. Uh -huh. And some of the launches which go eastward have to be tracked by uh, Port Blair, for example. Right. Okay. And similarly, we have got uh, stations in Bruna and Biak as an expansion of uh, further continuation of our right. visibility for uh, uh, due east launch. Mm -hmm. Similarly, for the Polar uh, Sun Synchronous, we need to have uh, Shar as the launch base station, mm -hmm. Trivandrum and Mauritius as the uh, downrange station. Right. That's how we expanded our network. Right. And at the end of the day, we found that with these stations at uh, Bangalore, uh, at Shah, yeah. Trivandrum, and Mauritius, mm -hmm. Shah, Port Blair, Brunei, and Biak, right. we've been able to really take care of almost all the launches possible from oh. India. And we did dual purpose of both launch vehicle tracking and satellite tracking, right. and same station used to work for both of them. And there is some aspect of the Indian Deep Space Network located within, I think, Bears Lake is what I remember. Yeah. Um, and also somewhere in Norway, of all places. Yes. So these are um, Indian um, sites in these foreign lands, or are they um, Russian and Norwegian okay. stations yeah. which India uses when required? To clarify this, um, Russian uh, was a joint. Uh, 
set up. I see. And basically, we were uh, we had set up some of our equipment there, and uh, they had set up their, their own equipment. And Russians had the responsibility of operating the ground station. Oh. That is how it was. Uh -huh. But Norwegian side is slightly different. Everything there, except for the telecommand equipment that has to be specific for our missions, uh -huh. we had delivered. The rest of the things are from Norway only. And uh, this is, of course, made uh, remotely programmable and all that. We don't have to be really there except for installation a few days and all that. Otherwise, uh, Norwegian station is totally operated by Norwegians. Right. Russians uh, uh, station operated by Russians only. Right. And now they've been uh, Bears Lake near near Moscow. Right. And that was about 50 kilometers away from Moscow. And uh, this way, right. our stations were built uh, for uh, Indian uh, satellites. Uh -huh. And uh, some of them, they used to do the work from their side. And we used to supplement them with our stay, our uh, equipment and all that. Right. We used to work jointly with them whenever our missions were on, on for about right. uh, a few days, uh, for much about 90 days. We used to stay there and work on some of those things. I was uh, really surprised to learn that in 1976, the very first sounding rocket that was launched from Norway was launched by Indian yes. engineers. And I think that connection is still there through yes, this very kind much of Yes, that's correct. Uh, we, we, I missed that one, but yes, that was one of those connections there. And we also sent uh, some uh, sounding rockets uh, to, uh, I don't know exactly, but it's near about Svalbard. Uh, Svalbard, that's, where, that's yeah, right. That's uh, where, yeah. and they used to really, our uh, yeah. Indian uh, rocket people, they used to go to that place and work for a few uh, launches and all that. There. Now, of course, one more uh, connection is there between um, us from, uh, from Svalbard only uh -huh. to Hyderabad also there's one more connection. Yeah. Also uh, we extended our services both in the Arctic, uh, one is Arctic region and the Antarctic region. Uh -huh. Antarctic region also they have a ground station uh, uh, for yes. Norwegian. Yes. Uh -huh. And yeah. for that we use it only for uh, initial orbit raising phase and all those things. Right. When, wherever we really need for mm -hmm. uh, really uh, you know getting that uh, some of those critical data from our satellite right. we request them for a very short duration. But we established countries which have had uh, a deep space network for a, of their own for a long time, thinking of Soviet Union and now Russia, America, uh, NASA, yes. this is extensive deep space network, and of course the European Space Agency, and I'm sure to some extent China has also an extensive one. Uh, with those established um, deep space networks, do you have uh, um, collaborative agreements in place? mutual agreements so that when, for example, you need to track a satellite, an Indian satellite, and it's not in line of sight from India, then you can call on the assistance of other okay. nations. Okay. Well, we, we did um, establish a lot of collaborative arrangements with almost all the space agencies, uh, yeah. except Chinese, of course. Uh, we did uh, some of those things uh, right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, you know, suddenly we started looking at uh, uh, whether it's really required for the mission and how long we really need it. Mm -hmm. All those things we have really examined because economics certainly has a role in any of those things. Right. Yeah. So we did examine all those um, things. And finally, we have really now um, for say, say low authority missions like IRS and uh, any other uh -huh. um, uh, mission, we are finding that existing network along with Norwegian satellite uh, support, Norwegian ground station support, it's possible for us to really meet almost all the mission requirements. Right. That's possible. Uh, right. But in the deep space network, after some distance, mm -hmm. naturally we depend only on uh, something which is not there in India. Right. That's one of the reasons yeah. why we said that Indian deep space network should be available for this part of the globe for about 12 hours of tracking. Right. Uh -huh. When it goes to the other side of the globe, mm -hmm. we have to depend upon, um, uh, naturally when we look at uh, the options that we have, uh -huh. either it should have been done from uh, uh, Russians are from the Americans right. and we found that uh, um, and of course the European costs are extremely high so we, did, we never even considered uh, really? that cost. Ah, it's extremely, yeah. Yeah, very, very expensive. So at the moment the Indian Deep Space Network is quite uh, sophisticated, quite large. Um, you don't have any specific goals for development of any larger additional antennae? Actually, uh, as a technical person, yes, I would like to do something, <laughs> honestly. Because when we completed uh, the 32 meter antenna, all my people uh, who worked with me in those day, uh, days, they told us we should do something more, sir. More yeah. something bigger than this yeah. one, sir, and all that. I said, okay, somebody has to give the requirement of making yeah. uh, a 70 meter antenna, which uh, NASA has done and all that. But we should have that requirement coming up from yeah. some of these missions. So, but uh, now slowly but surely, 
but we had not really made up your mind on any of those things. But it looks like uh, our people are interested in making a bigger antenna now. Right. You're a technical person, you're an engineer, that's what you've been doing all along. As a director, your role is very different. You have to deal with people, maybe politics between teams, perhaps dealing with the finances and budgets. It's a very different set of skills. Do you enjoy being a, a director? Honestly, uh, I should certainly say that uh, I enjoy whatever work which I do. I do. <laughs> That's been very enlightening. Uh, I've learned quite a lot and I hope to come back and uh, speak to you again another time. For the moment, uh, thank you very much indeed. I really appreciate I, it. I should thank you. Uh, thank you very thank much. You.